Olive pythons are found in northern Australia. Like most pythons, olives prey on the birds, mammals, and lizards they can overpower, and are also known to eat small crocodiles. Look at you. That's every bit of two meters. Aren't you pretty? They're slender pythons and excellent swimmers as well as climbers. Also like most of the pythons I find in Australia, they have an interesting curiosity in calmly approaching humans. Because of the absence of humans here, I hypothesize that they suspect a calmly approaching person to be a kangaroo, perhaps more so at night. Of the dozen or so large pythons I found here, none of them scampered away at my gentle approach, and more times than not, turned toward me to investigate. This is the olive python, and they're called olive pythons, obviously, because we all love pythons. That was dumb. They're not the most vibrant of reptiles, and because of that, they're not very popular. I've never seen one in a zoo. I've never seen one in a pet shop or a reptile show. You hardly even see them in books. Despite their drab colors, he's still a python, and I still love him. Look how just gentle he's being for a wild-caught snake in his wild atmosphere. It's really hot outside, and sometimes when it's hot, snakes, their metabolism's higher. They're just a little bit more agitated, but... This one's about almost two meters long. They get four meters long. This is Australia's second largest snake after the scrub python. What else about them? Well, they've got tiny, tiny scales. They've got a huge scale count. So their skin feels more like skin rather than a, a scaly reptile feel. It's starting to get a little squirmy now. Hopefully he doesn't decide he wants to chomp me. I wouldn't blame him if he does. You know the routine. It's time to... Take your glamour shots, and then we will let you go on your way. All of Python's drab coloration offers perfect camouflage. Me hurriedly setting cameras up and trying to keep him in a manageable area for glamour shots and the hot temperatures have put this python in an unfriendly mood, and he's decided to tell me to back off with a series of bluff strikes. He'd feel much more comfortable in a cool burrow to sleep off the heat, and there's a rarely traveled small bridge behind me I'd like to move him to. I never use a stick to smash a python's face into the dirt so I can neck him. That's a sure way to communicate to the snake you mean it harm. I use the stick simply to discourage a strike and continue handling it as gently as possible. Like people, once a snake has decided you are a threat, it's much more difficult to become friends again. Wow, it's the night of the tiny pythons. I caught another python. This one is the olive python, long slender python compared to the uh, water python and the children's python. This one's much skinnier in, in girth. A little nippy at first when I picked him up off the highway, but now that he realizes it's Hank, he's chilling out and enjoying the hang. No pun intended with the hang. One of the tricks to hold in these pythons, especially these more arboreal type ones, is let them hang onto you. You don't really clasp them you kind of let your hands behave more like a, a tree and see they hang on to you. It's when you grip them, that they see how they get kind of more nervous when you grip them. So you let them hang on to you. New species of python, super excited about that. That's three for the trip so far. Still haven't found the EF5. That's the black-headed python. If we get one of those, I wish I could spend more time with you, but uh, you belong in the wild and it's gonna give me joy in my heart to see you crawling away. Hopefully you won't crawl away too fast.